Hey everyone, it's Cem Tezcan. Uh, today we are recording the third part of our speed run about this uh, handheld console. Uh, normally, in the first two chapters, uh, we have completed uh, the 3D modeling with the CAD modeling software SOLIDWORKS, but I realized that I forgot the um, connection seams of the plastic case, uh, which will be uh, which we are creating in this chapter and also as a final part we are creating the material IDs as we have talked about the last chapter uh, in SOLIDWORKS so we will be creating the material IDs and then move the 3D model into the MODO uh, which is the 3D software I'm using for this my general purposes and after we create the um, UVs there we will move the 3D model into Substance Painter. So this way, uh, we will be just start texturing this 3D model. So let's move on by creating the um, plastic connection seams. First of all, let me check from the front side. I didn't like the curvature here because I remember changing the raw value of this fillet but it doesn't look good on the final uh, shape. You can see that if I cancel, um, the curvature is not perfectly circular and it's not perfectly linear. So it's in the middle of somewhere, which is not looking good at this way. Let me change it to 0.15 to see how it works with a more linear look not good enough so let's roll back and change it to circular fillet all right so it looks much better this way because uh, it is better if we use a, a directly linear chamfer here or a nice circular radius here. So I choose to move on with a radius and you see that our LEDs are still there working good. So let's go move on by creating the seams. To do that I am going to create a 3D sketch. For creating this 3D sketch I'm using I'm going to use um, surfaces. So using these surfaces to find an intersection curve with my 3D model and I will use that intersection curves to create the seams of the um, plastic assembly. So let's start by checking to see where we can go. We can move our 3D sketch through here but you will see that there is a tricky pass at this area but later on we can move to the side as usual and by here we will be having a label here which won't be a problem for the seam finally we can move on to the other side and complete the circle so at the top part I'm starting by creating a sketch first. So by here, I will start by there, move here, and move like this. And then I will go on like that. Let me create a relation with my line with the 3D model as those are parallel. These are parallel as well. These are two. So let's define a distance. Right. Keeping the same distance 
it's everywhere all right we can delete this one and you see that we are having our shape but let's try to see how we can set this here all right i will move to the middle part at this side sorry that screen is changed so for this line i'm going to add this a uh, middle relationship and then trim the extended part right here let's do the same for this part as well i am creating an horizontal line first and connect its ending point with the middle of the side surface nice and i am trimming the rest nice so for the surface i'm creating an extrusion i will extrude it all the way down now we have a surface let's use some fillet for the surface to actually we can use the fillets on the 2d sketch which will be costing less sources for us i suppose i'm setting this fillet and set this fillet radius as four millimeters maybe it should be 10 even 20 works fine i suppose cool enough so i am committing these changes and now the extruded surface has fillets all right now i am creating a 3d sketch 3d sketches are not uh, plane dependent so it will be easier for us to uh, set it set our lines independently first we need to create an intersection curve i'm uh, activating the tool and by here i will select the entities to select the entities i will be using the bodies here first the surface body and then the solid body for the solid body i will use the main shape of our device i'm trying to find which one is that the last one all right and clicking ok and you see that uh, there is a 3d sketch generated through the intersection of the plane and 3d model so let's close this tool and let's hide the plane the surface all right the top part looks great side part is also looking great but the bottom part is not good enough because we not uh, we will not be using the same lines as the top part so i am deleting them and i will use a single line to connect with the other side and deleting the other line and looks good so let's commit these changes and now i am going to create a sketch at the right plane on the right plane i am creating a single center rectangle let's define it draw it first and for its center point I will connect it with this 3d line so now i can define the depth of my seam for example for the width of the 
edge seams I will use one millimeter and for the height I will use one millimeter as well but the half of it will be removed from the shape after that stage we will be using sweep extruded cut let me save my project first because it may be tricky since we are use, dealing with the uh, complex curves to create complex geometries even the geometry is not looking complex enough but the operation is really complex on this kind of curves so I'm selecting sorry yeah I'm selecting swept cut and for the profile I will use the last sketch I created and the rail I will use the 3d sketch and now you see that it's cut extruded through the circle so I'm clicking OK and you see that now we are having seams for this device the seam is looking too thick so let me change the parameters a little All right Still need some work. Let's make it 0.4. Right, so I'm changing the name of the dimension by mistake. Point four millimeters to point five millimeters should work fine. All right. Now we have to save our um, labels. For that, I will be using sketch to fix this area. This is one of the rectangles and the other one is here. So we assume that these labels has stickers and they are stuck over the seams of the plastic so I am merging this now our labels are looking whole once again all right now for the final part final uh, part that uh, on this model I will set the screw holes for the mesh. For that, I am selecting the planner back surface of the 3D model first and create a sketch there. And for the sketch, I will be defining various hole points for the screws. Maybe we can just yes use at the middle as well all right so let's set them having a cool diameter for the diameter i will be using seven millimeters let me see actually it's too much let's switch to five 
millimeters. All right. And I will create some lines to place the holes in a better positioning. For example, I will set this line with this radius to make start from the center of it. And it goes like through like there. And I will set the hole on this line. So I am setting this as a construction. Right now I can fix the center of this hole. So it makes the relations confused. So let's define a simple distance like that. He couldn't. Yeah. Pierce doesn't work. Let's check. Coincident and it works. All right. Now we are going to have the similar approach on here. Actually, we can use similar concentric relation between the corner radiuses and the holes, which will make our positioning easier. Let's connect this line to here. I'm making it horizontal. And for these two lines, I will set them equal. And finally, we couldn't fix this line no matter what we are doing, but finally it's black. So black lines means you defined every constriction to make it defined. All right, our lines are looking good. Now I am using an extruded cut through our shape. 20 millimeter works fine. It asks for creating multiple bodies. Why is that? Let me check first. All right, we have cut through the um, controller port actually. So to avoid it, I will use a different dimension for cut depth. Actually, we can change the position of this top hole because it's not a good place for directly piercing through the connection port. So let's move it aside.
like this. And I will duplicate it through the right plane. And set a distance between them. Which works or looks more consistent. Let's make it cut through again. Nice. It's too depth actually. It's having too deep. So I will change the extrusion depth to 12 millimeters. Let's see how it looks. Much better. Actually, we have cut through the volume wheel this time. All right, looks better. Actually, we will be using just the screw heads to be looking through these holes. So let's make it in a low depth. So it will be easier for us to create the screw heads 2.5. But this time I will be using the same sketch to extrude for the sides, you know, because they didn't create it didn't create the holes since the offset of these surfaces are in a different level. And let's make it eight millimeters. Ten millimeters or twelve, but I will use a different contour because I just need to create holes for the sides, not the center, as I did on the previous operation. Nice. Now we are we uh, we have the holes. So let's start. To, uh, let's create the screw holes. It's easy. Let's create an offset first. Let's extrude it. Two millimeters will find. I'm not merging the result because I will use this as a body. I am filleting the top. Creating a sketch here. Creating a point. Let's set this as equal and also perpendicular. Let's fix this center point concentric with the circle. All right, now we can adjust the screw head in a random rotational position. I will set a dimension. this will be the clearance from the edge so let's make it 0 0.25 uh, 25 
it's a little bit it's more high level uh, it's a high value so I just dropped it a little bit and now I will use an extruded cut with a thin feature I will increase the thickness of the cut all right great so I will use a chamfer here too much trying to find a good angle all right much better so let's create another chamfer for the corners Let's make it 45 degrees, drop the distance a little, alright, trying to see how it looks, maybe I can still adjust the angle a little bit more. Nice. Finally, I will increase the thickness. Around one millimeter. Great. So only problem here is the diameter of this screw so I will increase the diameter by lowering the offset amount with the outer surface like this and now I will move this body a little bit to the front like this great so we have the screw like this I will create a fillet for the holes by the way Let's select them manually. Nice. We moved this screw too much. All 
All right. So for one last touch, I'm going to isolate this shape first. Create a sketch here. Right. So by removing the isolate mo isolation mode and extrude it. I'm trying to extrude it as 0.25 millimeters. not just merge it with the screw head so it will be a fake screw head actually but it won't cause any trouble and my next step will be positioning it with the rest of the holes by copying it of course so as I said earlier this version of the SOLIDWORKS doesn't support copying the bodies with the constraint mode. So I will create a uh, blank copies of this body first and then position them with the constraints. So I will create a move bodies operation. Click here and I will use six copies over the first shape. Let me see if I have six, uh, seven screw heads and it's okay right now. And now I will just copy them one by one. So for the second body I'm using move copy bodies operation let's select them manually I will switch to the constraint mode and you will see that there is no copy option on this constraint mode it doesn't matter we can create it we already copied the shape so let's add some relations I'm selecting two circles which is the hole we have placed the screw and the second one is the position where I'm going to locate the screw and pressing OK. Doing it once again with the other for the other holes, selecting a body first, selecting the whole circle and the new one, and setting the relation as concentric. I need to select the circle around the body like this. So this will be a little tricky because the depth of the these objects are different but to make the correct positioning I need to evaluate measure the distance with the screw head and the back surface which is around 1.45 millimeters let's see if it works I will use direct editing tool once again and move the object 
with the constraints. First, I will position the position for the hole. Strange that having difficulty defining these simple comments. Not sure why. Possibly we have select the other bodies. Once we are selecting the edges. Yeah. Because they are all located at the same coordinate and gives us hard time to define the correct edge. What I will do is hiding the rest of the shape. So I am selecting a screw head and the body and click right clicking and clicking isolating. So there will be one screw here. So it will be easier for me to pose make the select the constraint surfaces and edges much more easier. And I am now selecting these circles like that. So this is the first constraint and this is the other one that I will define it as a distance 1.45. Let's flip the dimension, if it works. Our relation is just, yes. Now it's in a good position. Let me unhide one other screw. move it with the constraints. Doing the same for this one. Sorry, yeah, wrong edge. All right. I just cancelled the operation. It's really frustrating, you know. Sorry for that. Let's confirm it this time. I'm looking for the one last screw we have two of them let's hide one now I will move this to the right corner Set the distance and that's it. So I am leaving the isolation mode. So luckily we are having all the screws 
everywhere every hole so checking to see if you are missing something cool now it's time to define the material ids for this object actually uh, i'll show you how to do that on the led um, diffusers here and for the screen as well so i will set switch to the solid uh, i will switch in the library for the solid folder because these are having mm, not shader parameters it doesn't uh, it's not so much important it doesn't have so much importance because you can uh, use the plastics from here as well but once you import the 3d model into modo it will also import the textures that have been coming with this um, plastic or other materials so using solid materials is way better for fast workflow so i will use them as much as i can you see that they are limited but i will try to use every one of them since you you can actually in on the separate positions you can use the same uh, materials because this assignment is not just for uh, it's not for final uh, material id separation it's just for uh, making us to easily select the objects so i i can use the yellow one for these bodies as well i'm switching to the body selection mode and select the buttons first and set these as yellow All right let's define a white color for the body actually it just applied it to the whole project so i'm selecting body here and let me isolate it to see if i want something to separate separate from this body you see that this part looks okay, but I will use different materials for these faces because I will use uh, labels for these areas. Before doing that, let's extrude these a little. I was planning to do that with bump maps, normal maps, but Let's make it with 3D modeling. I will not merge these and set these bodies as orange color. We can use yellow as well to keep the material ID count low. I will set these pins with a different color. Also, I will set this as a different color because it will be hard for me to select this um, frame. So the rest of it looks nice. All right, so this body looks okay. Let's adjust this bodies with a different color. Nice. Okay. 
something's wrong with this button actually maybe we can just scale down it so it will be working much better looking much better so i will add a feature to scale this by 0 0.8 0 0.8 is too much let's try something else I don't want it uniformly scaled I will set the Z scale as 1 0.85 may work better let's move it a little bit to the front right I think it's looking better right now. Let's try something more. We don't have enough clearance at the back part, I suppose. No, I got. I will select this one. chamfer around two dimensions Nice. Offsetting this around point five millimeters. Let's cut extrude it a little bit more with only this body selected, of course. Nice. Now we are having a much more mechanical look. And also the button is more charming, I suppose. We can adjust the position on the next stage, but possibly we can leave it like that. All right. Now I'm checking to see if we have left something different or the screws let's select all of them and assign the yellow color as well we have two yellow colors I will select the second one and attach to the selection to keep them merged this way and looking to see we have glass let's hide this body and for the screen I will use the yellow 
on the surface. So we have two materials for the glass because uh, we are going to use the back part of this screen as a masked transparency, has in game masked transparency. So this way we will control some clearance around working as a frame on the glass part. So you can see that this is the main material, clear uh, glass. And I defined a secondary glass material, which is frosted glass, but it won't be a, a frosted glass it, for the back surface of this glass part. All right, let's exit isolation mode. And also I will delete the additional surface that we don't need anymore. I have lost this label. I missed this one. So let's sketch. Let's create a sketch here. And don't merge it. I will define a yellow color for this label as well. And then one R last label stays here. Let's do the same for it as well. Great. So it looks a way of having nice complexity by looking here. So let's move it to the model and work for the UVs. It will be the easier part because possibly you are think thinking about the UVs will take so much time for this model. It won't because we will be using auto UVs and use mostly triplanar projection on the material link, this piece. So let's switch the software. All right, now I am drag and dropping my SolidWorks file into Modo and it opens with a template of a scene. You see that there are three lights here. My 3D model is also here. The first thing we need to care about is the poly count when importing this kind of SOLIDWORKS files because for the rounded parts we have increased the complexity of the mesh in SOLIDWORKS. So that means the poly count will be generated according to that detail level or the smoothness level. So with that smoothness, we have ended up with this 3D model. So let's check the look of it. If we are having a complexity more than we want, we can switch to the SOLIDWORKS and adjust the uh, details of the 3D model. Or we are, if we are fine with the result, we can move on like that. As I see it, this 3D model has 500K polygons which is high, but since it's not a game pro project, we can move on like that. I'm checking to see if we have problems with any surfaces. We have a transparent material as a shader. First of all, we need to change this mesh to an editable mesh. So I am right clicking and change type to mesh because it's a locked mesh by default once we are importing it from SOLIDWORKS. So now it's editable. 
And the next thing I do is creating a new model scene and move this mesh into that because the default camera and the light setup of this existing SOLIDWORKS file comes with the SOLIDWORKS uh, default choices. So I don't want it. So I'm moving this uh, SOLIDWORKS mesh file into my new project. So this time I can save it and move on by here. And also I will uh, close the SOLIDWORKS project. And now we are having, as you are seeing that we are having the material IDs as we want it. Once I select my mesh, because I have just one, and select, make the selections according to the material IDs, you will see that I can easily select and isolate the different material IDs. For example, for the yellow parts, now I have this one, which will uh, make it easier for me to select anything like that. So as I see it, this is a nice distribution of polygon, polygon load according to the material ID. As you will see that uh, this yellow material ID has 300, uh, 300k polys. So which will work fine for a starter. I will keep these objects in a one material ID and I will name it as creating a new material IDs for this and set as secondary objects. So unhiding everything. Oh, by the way, let me roll back for the screen. I need to set the screen as a different object. So let me select the screen from the front and deselect volume wheel and set a new material as screen. Nice. Let's hide it. I'm trying to check if I need something different. We will be having a transparency for this um, diffusers, which won't be a problem because we may not, uh, we are not going to use textures for these ones. I will assign, I can assign a different material for this because if we use a transparent material for whole, whole set, it won't be so logical. So I am defining a different material ID for this one as diffusers, LED diffu diffusers. Signed it. All right. So next of the objects looking good. And now I will hide the material IDs I have assigned so far. Let's see. Screen. Diffusers are set. I am hiding those. And we have this orange objects. Let's assign those as different IDs. So let's see. Actually, each ID means each uh, another texture set. So I'm trying to keep it low to not uh, occupied by the lo uh, lots of texture sets. So my purpose here to merge some of them with the secondary materials. I think it won't be hard for me to select through this and Let's move those to secondary material, secondary objects as well. And I will hide it like this. So this is the main body. 
and this main body has a material should have a material I'm setting as main body All right so I am hiding this as well and we have the glass part so I am selected the glass material as transparent glass actually let's rename it as glass I will hide this and the back part of it is masked glass great unhiding everything from the texture I will trigger this command purge unused materials so it will delete the unnecessary materials that haven't been used on any polygon or selection set so we have end up ended up with six different material IDs two of them is the glass for the glass part which don't need so much of texture sets but we will create some masks for it so we have the main body here LED diffusers which doesn't require any texture set a screen we will work on it and the secondary objects which will be a mixture of some metallic or and the electric parts combined together looks nice so this is our 3d model and it will be rendered like that let me save it here so we haven't give it a name let's make it handheld 01 for a starter but we will made up a name or brand for this piece at the end all right so I am going to export this mesh as an FBX to open it in Substance Painter to make some texturing but before that we are going to create the UVs for each material IDs we don't uh, we can't have overlaying um, UVs for within a material ID so each material ID should be unwrapped within itself I'm using UV projection tool like that and this is the glass part that we are going to use after unwrapping I will use a fit command to keep it centered in the UV area nice so I am hiding this object and move on with the glass I will use the same UV projection tool you will see that on the radius on the edges with the radius that we have defined in SOLIDWORKS ends up with um, multi triangles to create the roundness there so this is not looking very nice it will also be hard for us to create the UVs with a manual unwrap there so I am using just automatic UVs with the UV projection tool which is named as Atlas projection so I am hiding this glass part since it's not have to any centered relation with the UV area I'm leaving it like that so we are at the main body selecting all the polygons hitting the same atlas projection that you are seeing here you see that there's an uh, overlapping UV here it doesn't matter because it doesn't belong to this uh, material ID we will figure out with the rest uh, uh, it will be cleared out once we um, unwrapped rest of the objects I'm hiding this so you see that they are still here because 
it's belong it uh, they belong to the object that haven't been unwrapped yet for the led diffusers we will not be using any uv's for textures for those but i will unwrap these in any case with a very in a very dirty way hiding those as well we are at the screen i'm uh, using the same auto unwrap option and i will use this i will use the fit option to center this uv to the uv area moving on by hiding it and our last material id is the secondary objects the yellow ones and i will use the uv projection tool once again all right i'm seeing a good proportion for the labels it will be uh, easier for us to make a readable textures for those in 4k or even 2k works good on this um, distribution so i'm leaving the labels in this material id and the uv texture set so nice and i am unhiding everything so we have unwrapped all the UVs for the each material IDs and our this means our, our 3D model is ready to export for the Substance Painter. So let's move on to the Substance Painter.